Okay, uh, sorry, I'm just doing a quick audio test for our ASL interpreter. Okay. Um, just waiting to see if... Okay, he's good. Okay, everyone ready? Yep. Um, Good afternoon. I'm Pat Living with the Department of Health and Social Services and moderator for the COVID-19 update for Wednesday, September 2nd with UConn Premier, the Honourable Sandy Silver. Today our sign language interpretation is being provided via Zoom from Winnipeg by Kevin Klein. André Boursier from French Language Services Directorate will translate any questions from French-speaking reporters. Following the Premier's statement, we will go to the phone lines for questions from reporters. We will call you by name and you will each have one question plus one follow-up. Premier Silver. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today on the traditional territories of the Ta'an Kwachin Council and the Kwan Dun First Nation. It has been over a month since we entered into phase three, our longest phase. Uh, changes in this phase will continue to be gradual and adaptive as we resume more day-to-day -day activities in, in a safe way. We have all been very impressed with the efforts from local businesses to adapt uh, and change to COVID realities. Uh, even with some of the very creative adaptations, we know that many businesses are still uh, feeling the strain when it comes to the safe to uh, that, that's felt through these safety precautions. Very early on in this pandemic, our government recognized a need to support businesses. We introduced several programming, uh, in, including Yukon Business Relief Program. Uh, to support Yukon businesses who are the heart of our economy. Today, I'm happy to share that this program will continue to provide support to Yukon businesses. To date, our government has committed more than $40 million to support Yukoners during this pandemic. The Yukon Business Relief Program is one of these particular pieces of support. Now, Minister Pillay will have more details about this program extension very, very soon. As we navigate the repercussions of COVID-19, we know that businesses continue to need help. The preservation of our local economy remains at the forefront of our minds as we continue to take the necessary steps to ensure public health and safety. The Yukon Business Relief Program is offered in partnership with Canor's business, uh, Northern Business Relief Fund, and businesses can apply for support for both or either of these programs through the Yukon government. We also continue to offer supports for essential workers through the essential, the Yukon Essential Workers Income Support Program. This program offers employers a subsidy to increase wages for essential workers and is available until early November. We will continue to listen to local businesses and work with them uh, to keep our economy going. As of this week, all Yukon schools are open to in-classroom instruction Yukon children have returned to school, and while there have been challenges, I am pleased to see the results of months of hard work from the school communities to ensure a safe return. For many Yukon families, the start of school year uh, brought with it more hurdles as seasonally expected colds re require more children and, and parents uh, to stay at home. This causes a ripple effect uh, as parents and caregivers also stay home to care for children. Uh, this can be a challenge, and it's a challenge that's being experienced right across the nation. I'd like to thank Yukon parents, caregivers, and teachers for their patience as we navigate new and stricter health policies in schools. I would also like to thank employers who have accommodated employees with more time off. Thank you very much for your patience, your understanding, and contributions to the safety of our society. Supports continue to be available for employers uh, and uh, self-employed Yukoners through the paid sick leave rebate. This program helps reimburse pay for time taken for sick days in response to the pandemic. Yukon employers can access this program through until March, the 20, uh, March 2021. Staying home in response to COVID-19 symptoms will remain a necessary and ongoing challenge for all of us, but it is an essential step to curbing the, uh, curbing the, the spread of the virus. 
Please remember, we are all in this together, and our government will remain responsive to the needs of Yukoners. And we want to hear from all Yukoners. And one way to share uh, how the pandemic has affected you and your family is by participating in the Canadian Index of Wellbeing Wellness Survey. The survey was sent to Yukoners uh, in early August, and it closes September the 6th. The purpose of this survey is to understand Yukoners' perceptions uh, of well-being and also the impacts of COVID-19, um, the public health response to help the quality of life of Yukoners. Questions will fo focus on things like physical and mental health, uh, safety in your communities and workplace, paying your bills, uh, access to education. While Yukon communities are incredibly resilient, we know that responding to COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on our overall well-being. This survey will help to identify some of the unintended consequences of the pandemic and also the overall health response so far. This is a chance to hear directly from Yukoners about how things are going during these challenging times and what we as a government can do to improve the well-being right across the territory. I encourage all Yukoners to please take the time to complete this important survey, which ends in a couple of days, uh, as it will inform us uh, on, as we continue to manage through the pandemic. Uh, it, it, it helps us uh, understand the impacts on individuals and, and communities, and it's very valuable information. Again, the survey is ending on September the 6th, and so please visit yukon.ca for more information. With no active cases of COVID-19 and no known community transmission, Yukon remains very well positioned. Last week, 109 Yukoners were tested at the Respiratory Assessment Center, or otherwise known as the RAC. Uh, the team tested everyone who presented with symptoms. As always, thank you for your hard work and dedication following the Safe Six and doing your part to keep all of us safe. Uh, each and every one of us uh, has made uh, changes and adjustments and sacrifices every day to help reduce the spread of COVID-19, and we thank you very much, Yukoners, for your continuing diligence. Let's keep on doing this good work, uh, keep up the physical distancing, staying two meters apart from each other that are uh, of anybody who's outside of your bubble. Uh, stay home if you're feeling sick. Follow the new social and uh, organized guidelines, uh, you know, with respect to limitations on group sizes. Uh, limit your travel uh, to rural communities and be respectful when you do go. Self-isolate if you're returning from travel to anywhere outside of British Columbia, Northwest Territories, or Nunavut, or if you had contact with anybody who's been diagnosed with COVID-19. And most of all, wash your hands and wash them frequently. I will say once again, uh, thank you very much, Yukoners. Thank you for following the guidelines and to keeping yourselves and your loved ones and your community safe. Uh, have a safe and healthy rest of the week, and I'll open up to, uh, to questions. Phone lines now and begin with Chris from CBC. Um, well, I, I hate to, uh, well, we didn't hear any of what the Premier just said because the audio feed was not transmitting to the phone in line. Oh. So. Um, I mean, we don't, we haven't we're seen a news release, so I, I don't even know what's been announced today. None of us do. Were we aware of that? We okay. Can you hear me now, Chris? Yes. Okay. It looks like we've actually just fixed it. <laughs> through for a second time. Yeah, we can go through okay. the whole thing again. No problem. We will go through it again. Sure. Can everybody else hear us? Okay, Gabrielle, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right, um, Premier Silver. I'm sorry, we'll begin again. <laughs> I won't. I won't subject you to my intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chris, for letting us know. Um, if those on the live link already heard this uh, outside of the media, I'm, I'm apologizing for being re repetitive, but important that the media knows <laughs> uh, the uh, the update. So I'll start again, uh, and again coming to you from the traditional territory of the Kwan Dun First Nation and the Ta'an Kwachin Council. Um, it's been over a month since we've entered into phase three, our longest phase. Uh, changes in this phase will continue to be gradual and adaptive as we resume the more day-to-day -day, uh, activities in a safe way. We have all been very uh, impressed with the, uh, with the efforts from local businesses to adapt uh, to changes uh, based upon new COVID realities. Uh, even with some very creative adaptation 
limitations, we know that many businesses are still uh, feeling the strain when it comes to safety precautions. Uh, very early on in the pandemic, we, our government recognized a need to support businesses. We introduced several programs, including the Yukon Business Relief Program, to support local businesses uh, who are the heart of our economy. Uh, today, I'm very happy to, uh, to share that this program will continue uh, to provide support to Yukon businesses. Uh, now, to date, the government has committed more than $40 million to support Yukoners during this pandemic. The uh, Yukon Business Relief Program is one part of that support. Uh, and Minister Pillay, uh, who's out on a community tour, uh, will have more details about this uh, program extension very soon. Uh, and I want to thank him and his, his department for all of his, their hard work uh, on this particular file. Um, we, as we navigate the repercussions of COVID-19, we, we know that businesses will continue to need our help. Uh, the preservation of our local economy remains uh, forefront in our minds as we continue to take the necessary steps to ensure public health and safety. Uh, the Yukon Business Relief Program is offered uh, in partnership with CanNor's Business Relief Fund, uh, Northern Business Relief Fund, and businesses can apply for support for both or either of these programs through the Yukon government. We also continue to offer supports for essential workers through the Yukon Essential Workers Income Support Program. This program offers employers a subsidy to increase wages for essential workers and is available until the end of November. Uh, we will continue to listen to the local businesses and to work with them uh, to keep our economy going. As of this week, all Yukon schools are open to classroom in-classroom uh, instruction. Uh, Yukon children have returned to school, and while there have been challenges, I'm very pleased to see the results of months of hard work from our school communities to ensure uh, a, a safe return. For many Yukon families, the start of the school year brought with it more hurdles as seasonally expected colds uh, require many children and parents uh, to stay home. This causes a ripple effect uh, as parents and caregivers also have to stay home to care for children if they're the ones sick. Uh, and, and this is a challenge that uh, is not unique to Yukon. It's definitely being felt right across our, our nation. I, I'd like to thank Yukon parents, caregivers, uh, and teachers for their patience as we navigate new and stricter health policies in schools. I would also like to thank employers who have accommodated Yukon employees while taking more time off. Uh, thank you for your patience and understanding and contributions to the safety of our society. Uh, supporting uh, Supports continue to be available for employers and self-employed Yukoners through the paid sick leave rebate. This program helps reimburse pay for uh, time taken off for sick days in response to the COVID-19 health pandemic. Yukon employers can access this program through until March of 2021. Staying home in response to COVID-19 symptoms will remain a necessary and ongoing challenge for us all, but it is an essential step to curbing the spread of the virus. Please remember we are all in this together and our government will remain responsive to the needs of Yukoners. And we want to hear from Yukoners, all Yukoners in one way or another, to show how uh, the pandemic is affecting you. And one way of doing that is by participating in the, uh, uh, with the Canadian Index of Wellbeing Wellness Survey. Now this survey was sent out to Yukoners in early August, but it closes in September the 6th. The Purpose of the study is uh, of the survey is to understand Yukoners' perceptions of well-being and the impacts of the COVID-19 public health response to help improve quality of life. Questions will be focused on things like physical and mental health, uh, safety in your community and workplace, paying your bills, access to education. While Yukon communities are incredibly resilient, we know that responding to the COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on our overall well-being. This survey will help us identify some of the unintended consequences of the pandemic and the overall health response so far. This is a chance to hear directly from Yukoners about how things are going during these challenging times and what we as a government can do to improve the well-being of everyone across the territory. So I encourage all Yukoners, please take the time to complete this important survey as it uh, will inform how we continue to manage the pandemic in a way that minimizes the impact on individuals and communities. Again, the, uh, the survey ends September 6th. 
You can visit yukon.ca for more information on that. And thank you if you've already taken this survey and if you intend on taking it in the next few days, thank you very much. With no active cases of COVID-19 and no known community transmission, Yukon remains well positioned. Last week, 109 Yukoners were tested at the Respiratory Assessment Center, otherwise known as the RAC. Uh, the team tested everyone who presented with symptoms. As always, thank you. Uh, thank you for your hard work and dedication for following the Safe Six and doing your part uh, to keep all Yukoners safe. Uh, each and every one of you is making sacrifices, uh, uh, challenge uh, changes and adjustments uh, to everyday life and it's helping to reduce the spread of COVID-19 immensely. Uh, so let's continue uh, to do that good work and remember to keep physical distancing, staying two meters apart uh, from anybody who's outside of your bubble. Uh, stay home if you're feeling sick. Follow the new uh, social and organized guidelines, gathering guidelines, uh, and respect the limitations on group sizes. Limit travel to rural communities and be very respectful when you do go. Self-isolate if you're returning from travel to anywhere outside of British Columbia, Northwest Territories, or Nunavut, or if you've come in contact with anybody who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And most of all, most importantly, continue to wash your hands and to do it frequently. I will say it once again, and once again, uh, thank you very much for following the guidelines, uh, for keeping yourself safe, for keeping your community and your loved ones safe as, as well. Thank you very much, Yukoners. Uh, have, a, have a safe and, and healthy rest of your week and uh, open for questions. Now we'll go to the phone lines. Chris, CBC. Hi, thanks, uh, Premier. Appreciate the do-over. Um, I, I, I'm interested to ask uh, what your opinion is of uh, the Yukon Party's proposal today uh, to amend the Civil Emergency Measures Act to require the Legislative Assembly uh, to debate uh, certain emergency measures and certain extension uh, of states of emergency, uh, and also uh, to, to uh, review orders in council and ministerial orders. What, what do you think of that idea? Uh, first, I heard of it today, Chris. Sorry, we've been busy dealing with the pandemic. Um, again, the Legislative Assembly is opening up in October. Uh, very excited to get back into, uh, into the Legislative Assembly. Uh, very uh, interested in what the opposition has to say, uh, suggestions, critiques, uh, the whole nine yards. So looking forward for that opportunity. As you know, uh, Private Members Days on Wednesdays great opportunity for opposition to have their day to, to put forth motions and other things. Uh, nothing stopping them right now from uh, sending in, uh, you know, emails or letters uh, as well. Uh, but definitely really looking forward to the opening of the Legislative Assembly. Follow up, Chris? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, we've talked about this before, but is it your, your assertion then that the, the government is simply too busy to uh, have any kind of uh, on-the-record legislative uh, review of your government's actions during the pandemic over the last uh, several months? No, uh, not at all. Uh, I, I, there's no other way to answer that question, Chris, other than no. I mean, the Legislative Assembly was uh, uh, was closed down uh, when the, the official opposition requested that we shut down the, 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 the Assembly. So uh, we haven't heard much from them since, uh, despite numerous offerings uh, for briefings on discussions of ministerial orders uh, passed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our government has been working tirelessly all summer. In fact, we've been in here day in and day out since March. Uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what Yukoners expect from their elected officials. So uh, again, uh, we uh, shut down the Legislative Assembly. All parties committed to that uh, on the request of the official opposition. We will open it up again uh, in the fall, uh, in uh, less than a month or a month now, and uh, really relishing the opportunity to, uh, to have that debate and to show Yukoners what we have done to not only reduce the curve, but to plank the curve of cases here in the Yukon. Thank you. We'll move to Gabrielle, Whitehurst Star. Gabrielle? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if there's any update to how the $4 million from the federal government for education will be spent. Um, 
We don't have a, an official update right now, although, um, you know, during the course of the pandemic, we have, uh, we have definitely reassigned funding uh, focused in on key priorities um, and uh, in our public school system to ensure that the students are safe, the families are safe, the staff and the, and the general community are safe. Uh, so with this extra support from the Government of Canada that we're very thankful to have, uh, we'll be able to offset those costs um, and, and you know, there's there's also a, a flexibility uh, in identifying new and emerging uh, needs to our school communities as they come in. Um, I could say that talking with the Department of Education, they're they're prioritizing the spending on health and safety of the of students and staff in school communities, uh, ensuring the continuation uh, of uh, of learning for all students with as many students in class as safely possible, uh, support for students with uh, diverse learning needs, uh, and for students, uh, you know, it, that have uh, additional or different support needs. Uh, also, uh, supports for children um, of critical or essential uh, service workers, and also uh, supporting students, teachers, and, uh, and support staff uh, for flexibility in learning, uh, including access to, to technologies and tools and, and training. Question, Gabrielle? Yeah, um, I'm, now that we're kind of in this next round of relief programming being extended, I'm wondering if there are any of the COVID-19 relief programs that won't be extended. Um, we're we're going to continue to to work with uh, all of our uh, stakeholders and newcomers and 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 making sure that we identify needs and and identifying those needs and uh, and making sure that the supports are available. Again, you know, uh, uh, again, I hate to dwell on the the survey, the index of well-being survey, but an extremely important part of us knowing uh, that our programs and services uh, are targeting and focusing in uh, the 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 individual communities and and sectors of our of our beautiful territory correctly is by getting that input from UConners as well. So whether it's uh, from the very good work that was done with the Business Advisory Committee uh, that Minister Play and his team and Minister Dendy's uh, worked with when coming to economic supports uh, or, or working with our partners in, in public health, um, you know, it's really important that, uh, that we have that input uh, from the communities. Um, you know, we are on wiggly conversations, myself as Minister of Finance with the finance ministers across Canada and also the First Minister's calls, the Council of the Federation calls. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of balls in the air as far as federal funding that's coming in. Uh, you know, it was a long time uh, negotiating the uh, the restart money uh, that's now flowing into Yukon and other jurisdictions and being aware of how do we most uh, how do we b most benefit from federal funding uh, by continuing to ask for flexibility uh, for the unique needs of the North? And we've been doing a good job of getting that. Uh, and then having the departments uh, report in about where we still need to provide local territorial government support uh, where maybe some of these federal fundings uh, fall short. I, I will say as well, the, the federal government has been uh, very uh, attuned to the programming that is happening here locally. Um, our sick leave uh, rebate uh, is the, the basis of a, of a national model uh, that, that the federal government is taking and adapting. Uh, so not only are we paying attention to their flexibilities, but uh, it's good to see that uh, smaller jurisdictions like the Yukon have a, a large voice when it comes to uh, initiatives and best practices being implemented right across the, this nation. Thank you. We'll move to Claudiane, Radio-Canada. Uh, yes, so um, yesterday, Yukon University was pulled out after a risk of COVID. Uh, is this to say this will be the new norm, that when there is a COVID risk in a school or a COVID case in a school, that school will be closed down? Uh, I think what you see here is the due diligence uh, at the university of making sure that the students are safe. Um, you know, every case is going to be different. Uh, every uh, either, uh, you know, scare of uh, uh, an issue or an actual COVID uh, uh, case has to be taken uh, as an independent uh, effort. But again, you know, the actions of, uh, of the college or the university uh, and, uh, and the staff there is uh, making sure that we are erring on the side of caution uh, so that every 
everybody involved uh, is is as safe as possible. So it's hard to answer that question uh, as far as will this be some kind of precedent setting. Uh, I think really it's just a matter of following the guidelines and making sure that we have the ability to trace individuals. Um, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at uh, uh, public health's ability uh, to um, uh, to do that tracing very quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this is going to be precedent setting, Claude Jen. Follow-up, Claudianne? It appears the number of sick days uh, taken by YCG government has uh, dropped in April since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, this data comes through an access for information request. Do you have any idea why that is? It appears the uh, number of sick days are the lowest since 2017. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I can. I, I haven't seen that specifically uh, myself, Claude Jen, but uh, I know that uh, right away when uh, we were dealing with things like cancellation of the Arctic Winter Games back in March, my goodness, it feels like an eon ago, but uh, it was just March, uh, we were definitely, again, erring on the side of caution. I know a lot of uh, government officials and, uh, and workers, uh, to be safe, you know, did go home uh, until uh, uh, practices were in place. I was amazed at how quickly the government responded to uh, the technologies needed to have public servants working from home. I really hope uh, after a review of pandemic uh, uh, procedures that we better ourselves as far as our ability to, to adapt the workplace uh, 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 operational behaviors. Um, but I would imagine too with April, you, you what I saw anyway, just anecdotally uh, with the folks that I deal with at the main administrative building uh, is, you know, a, a desire to come back, check in and, uh, and to, you know, you know, be, be present at work uh, for some of the things that are harder to do from home. But uh, just speculating right now, uh, I could see if we uh, get an analysis from Yukon statistics as to why uh, they believe there is a, a decrease in April. But it seems to be related to the timelines as far as the known and unknowns about this pandemic. Thank you. We'll go now to Haley from the Yukon News. Great, thanks. Um, I had another question about the Yukon University. Sure precautions that were taken. Do you know if the two students who failed to self-isolate will be facing any charges um, from the Emergency Act? Uh, I know that, uh, you know, the enforcement team is investigating the incident, incident right now, and we take this very seriously. So uh, uh, nothing, to, no, no, uh, nothing to report yet as far as to whether or not they're receiving fines, but we are absolutely looking into the situation. Okay. Um, my second question, again, was another one about that $4 million. Um, in what you referred to there. Does that mean the money won't be considered? Can we rule out a return for senior students in high schools to full-time classes? Yeah, it, it's not going to rule out very much, very many things. You know, again, we were really happy to get flexibility on this money. Um, you know, there's unique circumstances to the north versus other areas. Um, we are the only jurisdiction, not the only, but we're a jurisdiction which we don't have spread right now. There's no community spread. Uh, so we were the first community to go back into uh, school as well. So that's it's unique to other jurisdictions like, let's say, Quebec uh, or, or Ontario that are, you know, dealing with their own issues. Uh, so that flexibility allows us to take a look at maybe there's other costs that other jurisdictions uh, have to have that we don't have to have. Therefore, we will apply that, uh, that to other considerations. But uh, again, it's in two different uh, buckets, I guess, you know, one coming pretty immediately and the other one coming later on in the, at the end of, this, of the calendar year. Um, I did talk with the Minister of Education on this and, you know, the, the preparations that we put into place already for, you know, uh, physical distancing, you know, those different things, um, you know, making sure that we have that continuing learning in class and having as much face-to-face -face, uh, uh, education as possible by still adhering to the guidelines. That comes with a huge cost and uh, you know the, the department definitely said we will spend this we will definitely be able to spend this and uh, and it does give the department then more flexibility with their within their own budgeting right I mean a couple of weeks ago we would have thought that we as a territorial government were responsible for uh, paying this and budgeted accordingly uh, so it's it's great to have an extra four million dollars so that the department can look at all the things that we need to do to maximize the amount of face-to-face -face, uh, time for our students Thank you. Yeah. And thank sorry you. for you having to listen to the speech twice. Yeah, that's okay. I, thank you, Premier Silver. I'd like to thank everyone for their time today. Our next COVID-19 update is scheduled for Wednesday, September 9th at 2 p.m.